In pre-calc chapter 1 section 5 we're going to add, subtract, multiply, divide functions and then evaluate compositions. So the first part, the operations of functions is pretty easy. It's, it's using our, our previous knowledge of uh, just simplifying functions. And that's all we're doing is just simplifying functions. Some notation um, is f of x plus g of x is telling us to add the functions. That same thing can be written as f plus g of x, where you're telling us what to do with those functions, and then you're stating what the actual independent variable would be after it. And so it's, it's a little different notation, but it means the same thing. So f of x minus g of x can be written as f minus g of x. Um, the products, same thing can be written as the f times g of x, and then quotients, f divided by g of x. And again, we have to be careful with the really state our domains, where g of x or denominator cannot be zero. Uh, the domain of the result is the intersection of f and g, and really just find the domain, find domain of result. So that's what you want to do is just find the domain. If you're finding, if you're asked to find the domain, just find the domain of the result. So some examples here: if we're given the f of x function or given the g of function here, and we're asked to do, to do f minus g of x. So to do that, we just take the function f, which is x squared, and we minus the function g. Now, whenever we're writing this out, we should be showing it through parentheses, or the substitution through parentheses. Uh, we've got to be very careful with that, so we, we keep this distributing the negative, because we're subtracting all of g of x, and so that's the, both the terms, 1 minus x. And then we can just simplify that, and then I'll put it in uh, standard form, so decreasing by degree. And so that would be the equivalence of f minus g of x. Uh, for the f divided by g of x, we can just write it as a fraction. So it's the f function divided by the g function. And there's nothing to do to simplify here. We cannot reduce the x's because it's a quantity of 1 minus x in the denominator. We have to do the 1 minus x before we do the division there. So we cannot do any reducing. But we do need to state that x cannot equal 1 because of the implied domain. We cannot have a denominator of 0. Let's do a multiplication one. So if I have like um, x squared plus 2 is f of x and g of x is x minus 3. And we want to do f times g of x. It's a good review of our basic math where we are distributing here. And so this one's a little more complicated because it's not just two uh, uh, linear binomials. They have an x squared here. But we're still going to do the extended distributed property. So it would be x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2x minus 6. And that would be the answer. And I'm just distributing through to both parentheses. And there's no like terms, so that would be it. Uh, and so the only other thing is compositions. So compositions, uh, you should be used to this form, which says g of f of x. And in this form, you're placing the f of x in place of the x and g. The same thing can be written as this, where it's g composed of f. It's the same notation. g composed of f of x. Uh, and so to evaluate, you substitute all of f of x in for the x and g of x. So you're putting f of x in for g in, in for the x in g of x. Uh, and we can also write the other way around. f of g of x, we've written as f composed of g of x. And then the domain of those it is a little tricky here. The domain of f composed of g is a set of all x in the domain of g, such that g of x is in the domain of f. So you have to make sure at first it works for g. What's the domain of g? Find that first. And then out of those set of numbers, which of those set of numbers also works for f? So you first check the innermost, the g of x here, check the domain of that. If you had like whole numbers, then you out of the whole numbers, which one would work for f? And maybe it's only the whole numbers greater than 10 then. And so you can restrict it even more so. So just check the domain of the first function, then we put those in the second function. So example here, if we're given the two functions f of x and g of x, let's find f composed of g of x. So to do this, we want to take the g function. So we'll take the g function 
they want to put it in place of the x in the other function. So when we write this, it's going to be 1 over, instead of writing x, I'm going to replace it with all of g. Then to look at our domain here, I first look at our g. Our g domain is all real numbers. x could be anything for 2x plus 1. And so we put those all real numbers in for this, 1 over x, and we figure out what works for that. So 1 over 2x plus 1, what works for that. And then we restrict it. So x here cannot equal the negative 1 half. And so you could look at the result again and see what works for that function. Let's do another problem here with the same functions, but instead let's do g composed of f of x. So we're going to do this one. We take the function f. So we're going to go the other way now. We're going to take this entire function and put it in for the x in the other equation. So we're going to write 2 times the quantity x, which is 1 over x plus 1. And so then we can simplify this a little bit. Uh, 2 times 1 over x so it could be written as 2 over x plus 1. And again, we have to state here that x cannot equal 0. So that would be the result. These will be your homework problems for tonight. So you want to do both ways, f of g of x and g of f of x. Um, so I want you to find both of those compositions and then turn that in tomorrow. Last thing, uh, to decompose means to break a function into smaller functions. So it's doing the opposite. So this would be like f composed of g of x. And so it's once you find possibilities for f of x and for g of x. And for this, there's a lot of there's more than one answer. And so when I look at it, I can look for what groups are in here. So one possibility could be looking for the group of just the entire numerator could be a group, and then the fraction could be a second group. If I did it that way, then the g of x is going to be the numerator, the cube root of 8 minus x, and then the f of x is going to be x over 5. And so then if you go back and do the um, f composed of g, you're going to replace the entire cube root in for this x to get back to this point. Um, now there's another possibility that's pretty easy to see here, and that would be if instead of grouping the entire numerator, let's just look at the part underneath the root and make that be our, our uh, substitution or our, our g of x. And so in that case, we have f of x and g of x. That little group or chunk is going to be 8 minus x, which means the fraction has to be the cube root of x, I'm sure we see it's cube root of x, all over 5. So then that substitution would still give you this comp composition. And so there's more than one answer there, but can you break it up? So that's, that's it. It's easy peasy tonight.